Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Of the internet. This is Rock on the Spot Commander here with building another. It's not another, building a team, and with Halloween coming up, the uh, build is 1,300 points. Everyone must be either a uh, either everyone mu must either have the mystical or monster keyword. Lust, I forget. Alrighty. Sorry, I had to get something prepared for that right quick. Anyway, so with the, with uh, this bill, I'll be uh, putting together. I will be putting together Midnight Suns team with help from Eternity. But let's focus on the Midnight Suns first. Alrighty. So, our two heavy hitters are Doctor Strange, who comes in at a whopping 150 points. Got the Mystics team ability. And we'll be starting. will be starting off at the uh, 150. Uh, his 150 point uh, starting dial or starting click. He has the Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, Midnight Suns, and Mystical keywords. As he's starting on his 150 point starting line, he has the trait Sorcerer Supreme. Dr. Strange can use willpower. Okay. Then he has a trait, regardless of which starting line he's on, Protective Auras. Give Dr. Strange your free action and choose one of the following Shape Change, Toughness, or Modify Defense Values by plus one. Dr. Strange can use the chosen effect until he chooses it, until he uses this ability again. When friendly characters are adjacent to Dr. Strange, they can use the chosen effect as well. So that okay, that can be that can be rather useful. I'm not saying that uh, everyone's uh, lacking for high defense values, but no, I'm also not saying they couldn't use the boost. You know what, know what I'm saying? Same with shaping your toughness. Uh, we got some phasing teleport starting off, which uh, clicks in the running shot. On um, attack, we've got pre precision strike, which clicks into penetrating psychic blast, which gives way to poison. On defense, we've got uh, special power orb of Agamotto. Dr. Strange needs probab probability control once on your turn and once during each attack when it isn't your turn. So basically, if he can, if he's got a line of fire, yeah, he's... I, I don't have to worry about... Well, I guess I'll, I'll let this one go. After Orbevaga Moto, we've got Energy Deflection. On damage, we start off with Perplex, which gives way to Outwit, and then Book of the Vashanti. Give Dr. Strange a power action and choose a friendly character within three squares in line of fire. Roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled and heal the chosen character number of clicks equal to half the, of the result. You may activate this effect with a double power action and heal all friendly characters within three squares instead. Okay, alright. 
Next up, we've got Ghost Rider. Now, many of you may be more familiar with uh, the Ronnie, the uh, Ronnie Reyes version that was uh, featured on Ages of Shield a few years ago. This is based on the Danny Ketch version, which was uh, well the '90s Ghost Rider and the Ghost Rider that I first discovered. Anyway, comes in 120 points, no team ability. You have the Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, and Mystical Keywords. Then we've got uh, Trait, Pennant Stare. Whenever a friendly character of 25 points or more is KO'd by an opponent, place a Pennant token on this card. When Ghost Rider makes a close combat attack, you may replace his damage value with the number of Pennant tokens on this card and, lo and lock it. If you do, damage value is penetrated. Now, you need to build some up, which basically means you're sacrificing. To make it worth your while, you need to at least give up three people because he has a three damage. Even better would be four or five, but again, you don't want to give up that many. Anywho, starting off on uh, speed, we've got Hellfire Cycle. Ghost Rider can use hypersonic speed, and improved movement ignores elevation and hindering terrain. Okay, that's very good. Then we, that gives way to charge, which gives way to sidestep. He's got nothing on his attack dial. On defense, we start off with impervious, as well as indomitable, I might add. Which gives way to invulnerability, which gives way to regeneration. And then eventually on the dial we click into close combat expert. So, okay. not bad. But. Actually, it, 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 it's a piece that can, that can be useful. Next on the list we've got... Damien Hellstrom, also known as the Son of Satan. No, really, he, that's what he's also known as. Anyways, Damon brings the Mystic's team ability. He's got a starting point value of 113. He's got the Defenders, Detective, Hellfire Club, League of Monsters, Midnight Suns, Mystical, and Ruler keywords. And he's got a trait, Exorcist Supreme. Damon Hellstorm and adjacent friendly characters can be the target of mind control. That can be very useful. Anyway, we start off with uh, some phasing teleport. On, on move, we start off with phasing teleport, which gives rid of stealth. Uh, we, on attack, we start off with penetrating psychic blast, which gives way to blades, claws, fangs. On defense, we start off with invulnerability, which gives way to toughness. And on uh, damage, we start off with shape changers, which gives way to outwit. All in all, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Next up, we've got... Hannibal King. As uh, made noteworthy... Well... For those who remember Blade Trinity, yes, Hannibal King is the character that uh, was played by Ryan Reynolds. But no team ability, um, 107 point, uh, point cost, Detective, Midnight Suns, and Monster Keywords. Okay. Um, starting off on speed, we've got Form of Mist, Form of Wolf. Hannibal King can use Running Shot and Stealth. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose to increase Hannibal King's attack or defense value by one or two. If you do, then decrease the other combat value by the same amount until your next turn. Okay, so, you know... I guess it's... It is admittedly kind of a crapshoot. Anyways. After that, we... 
that gives way to Wolf's to charge, which is uh, his other his only other speed power. On attack, we start off with Super Strength, which gives way to Blaze Claw's Fangs, which gives way to Steel Energy. On defense, one where he's got Indomitable. He starts off with Toughness, which gives way to Super Senses, which gives way to Regeneration. Then uh, we start off without Wit. Which gives way to exploit weakness. Also, he is a flyer, meaning he can carry well, three of these guys. Next on the list, we've got Blade. Now, yes, he's supposed to have a four blade there broke off. Blade comes in at 85 points. With no uh, team ability. Interesting. He's got the martial artist, midnight suns, monster, and soldier keywords. And he's got a trait, supernatural tracking. At the beginning of the game, choose an opposing character. That character can automatically break away from Blade, and when it do does roll to break away, only succeeds on a roll of a six. So it's like it's like plasticity, but not. So potentially you can lock someone up with next to them for a good long while. Um, on speed, we start off with charge, it gives way to stealth. On attack, we start off with a special power. Blade isn't just a name. Blade can use Blade's Claw's Fangs. When he does, increase damage dealt by one for each of the following the, tar the target possesses or can use. Monster keyword, mystical keyword, or steel energy. That's potentially plus three to the damage. Uh, that gives me his regular blade slots fangs. Then on uh, defense, we first off we've got indomitable. That and uh, power wise, we got we start off with toughness, which gives way to combat reflexes, then regeneration, and on. Uh, Damage, we uh, click into Exploit Weakness. And finally, we've got Frank Drake rounding out the, the Night Stalkers. Frank costs 55 points, has no, key, has no team ability, has a detective in Midnight Suns. Oh, wait. Never mind. I can't use him. Crap. Well, that sucks. And again, maybe that'll. Okay. Two twenty. Three oh five. Four twenty five. 575. Okay, so that gives us. Hmm. Okay. That's sixteen. Ah, uh, then I can't use the damn. Uh. 
Oh well. Hey, I don't think I have to use you anymore. Well, that's a plus. I got a couple more to. Completely did not realize that he was, uh... <coughs> All righty. Well, we can't use Frank Craig after all. So. That gives us more wiggle room than initially, but not at the same time as. So first off, replacement wise. Also, I won't be using a uh, uh, resource like I was planning to initially, so. So first off, we've got Werewolf by Night. That's kind of his shtick, because he's a werewolf at night. Also, his book is the uh, first, is the book that uh, Moon Knight first appeared in. Fun fact. So, comes at 81 points. We've got the Animal Legion of Monsters, Midnight Suns, Monster, and Night Shift keywords. We've got uh, trait Full Moon. At the beginning of your turn, roll, roll a d6 once for all friendly characters with the Full Moon trait. On a result of 1 to 3, Werewolf can you Werewolf by Night can use Shape Change. On a result of 4 through 6, click Werewolf by Night to either click 9 or click 11, and click him to click 3 at the end of the turn or before he takes any damage, whichever comes first. Then he's got the, the uh, trait Curse of the Werewolf. When an opposing character takes damage from Werewolf by Night's attack, that character possesses Battle Fury as long as Werewolf by Night is on the map. Anyway, so he starts off with Stealth. Click, that, clicks in, that gives with a Charge and Flurry. Uh, he clicks into Blaze Claw's Fangs. Starts off with Super Senses. Gives way to Regen, then Willpower. Then on Damage, we start off with Exploit Weakness, then Perplex, then Battle Fury. And finally, well, before certain cosmic deep entities, Jennifer Kale. Jennifer Kale is kind of an odd one. Most recently, she was involved in uh, shenanigans in Weird World during um, Secret Wars. Anywho, Jennifer starts off, uh, pops in at, six, at 77 points, has the Mystics team ability. Has the Midnight Suns and Mystical Keywords. Has the trait Defender of the Nexus of Realities. At the beginning of the game, place a special Nexus terrain marker on the map, at least five squares away from any starting area. A character occupying that square can use probability control, even if Jennifer Kale isn't on the map. If Jennifer Kale occupies that square, she can use it in addition to her normal probability control. That's kind of a big deal, because usually a character can only use probability control once per turn. Um, that's also kind of the trait that uh, Doctor Strange had is also kind of a big deal too, for the same reason. Um, but for example, if a character has probability control, you can't normally have them you cause a reroll. Then when that reroll doesn't turn out the way you want it to. Give them a token for a theme team reroll. Just doesn't work that way. Anyway, so the next, uh, her next trait. When a friendly character named Man Thing is adjacent to Jennifer Kale, they both modify their attack values by plus one, and not already modified by this effect. 
not gonna buy. That doesn't really matter with this because I don't. Ha I don't have that version of. I don't have a man thing to put on here, or at least a man thing with the uh, midnight sun's keyword. Let's see. We start off with phasing, which gives way to running shot. On attack, we start off with uh, penetrating psychic blast, which gives. On uh, and on. Defense, we start off with Energy of the Flexion, which gives way to Barrier. And finally, on Damage, we start off with Probability Control, and that's all we've got. Okay, so that's the mid. Now, let's talk about Eternity, shall we? Eternity is on this team mainly to get it up to 1,300 points, or close to. Okay, so Eternity is a Colossal. He has the uh, Power Cosmic Team ability, so he has built-in willpower as well as... Also, he cannot be targeted by Outwit. And he's also got a handful of traits, so let's get started, shall we? Oh, so the Cosmic and Deity keywords for now. Okay. So we start off with, as he's on his 600 point uh, starting line, I'm the embodiment of this reality. When eternity, when eternity is given an action token, after action is resolved, remove it. Okay. He never takes action tokens. I've seen this in action. It can be annoying. He's got the cosmic entity trait. Eternity can't be the target of an attack with more than one target. Okay. Then you've got you can't kill the abstract, eternity. When another friendly character that isn't a bystander would be KO'd once per turn, you may roll a D6. On a six, turn that character to its last non-KO click instead. When eternity is KO'd, this effect continues for the rest of the game. Okay. Next we've got finally, I should say. Everywhere at once. During force construction, Eternity gains all keywords from all other characters on your starting force. Why? Wow, that means he's got Mystical, Monster, Detective, well, Midnight Suns. Alrighty. And he's got, uh, for a few clicks here and there on his, on his rather long dial, a special power on speed. You have captured my attention. When another character KOs and a character opposing to it with an attack, give it a notice token. As a free action, place an eternity adjacent to a character with a notice token. And he's got some phasing, he's got some mind control. On attack, you got pulse wave, penetrating psychic blast, incapacitate. We got some invincible. On defense, we got invincible, we got impervious, we got vulnerability, we got regeneration. On uh, damage, we got outwit, probability control, and perplex. Actually, there's a look at the dial. That is close to uh, 1300 points. It's not over, so. Should be an interesting team to run, that's for sure. Should definitely make for an interesting game. Also, um, for those who might be wondering, last week's game, with the uh, sealed event, I ended up running... Hulk. Generic World Breaker. Love these guys. Big Boss Hill. And a Thanos Duplicate. Uh, 
I went two and one. Either two and one or one and two. And one of those one of those wins was a buy. That much I can say. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, hopefully, and I am. I'm so sorry to not get the uh, Halloween 2 review up uh, sooner, but uh, I'm going to try and get it up this week. Um, also, I'm kind of thinking maybe a uh, reaction video to uh, um, <clears throat> the new uh, Pet Cemetery trailer, which admittedly has been out for a few weeks, but I don't know, I thought maybe I'd still look at it talk about it a bit. Pet Cemetery being one of my favorite uh, films that was films based on a, a Stephen King novel. Mainly because it's one of the closest to the source material. Anywho, that's it for today. Um, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, links to my Facebook Twitter and Patreon are in the description box down below. Um, this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.